Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Kerry Krieger, the founder and executive director of Save the Frogs. And I am happy to be here today and happy that you're here for Save the Frogs Academy. And today we're going to be discussing fundraising. And the goal of today's class is not only for me to let you know some ideas on how to fundraise, how Save the Frogs has raised money traditionally, um, how you can help us raise money, but I'm also hoping to get your ideas on both how Save the Frogs can raise more money and how people like you can get involved and how we can uh, best educate our supporters to make them the most effective fundraisers. Uh, because Save the Frogs, as I've said in the past, we don't get money from the government. We have to raise all of our funds. And I've never given a class like this before. I hope it's useful to people. I don't consider myself an amazing fundraiser, but I've raised, I think, about $600,000 over my amphibian career which has been enough to grow Save the Frogs and keep Save the Frogs going for the past five and a half years. But we could certainly use a whole lot more uh, funding so that we can get more programs going, so that we can hire the staff that we need. Uh, having a lot of volunteers is fantastic, but having people working full time, especially people that we know are highly qualified if we want to continue growing Save the Frogs and doing the numerous programs that we um, have and want them um, growing, such as getting dissections out of schools, getting frog legs out of restaurants, getting bad pesticides banned, land protected, land purchased, uh, environmental legislation in place. All this environmental education that we do, taking people into the field, training students, holding Save the Frogs Day events, etc., then we need to raise a lot more money than we have been doing. So, what's going to happen today? I'm going to kind of give you my fundraising history, what I've done, and talk to you about some of the things, some of the ideas that I have on how uh, people like you can help out. And we have two special guests. We've got Michael Starkey will be giving a presentation about effective advocacy and fundraising at tables, informational tables, and uh, at live events. And then there is a high chance that we have C.N. Hayes, one of our board members, come on the line to talk to us about her experiences fundraising last Save the Frogs Day. And I'm also happy to hear any of your experiences or thoughts on fundraising, any ideas if you have a plan, or maybe by the end of this class you will have a plan of something that you want to do to help raise funds for frog conservation then I'm happy to hear about it. And also, as we may have some extra time, I'm happy to take any kind of questions today about frogs or Save the Frogs. So just open Q&A, we probably will have time for. So if you have any kind of questions, then start thinking about those and you will likely have an opportunity to uh, ask. Okay, so I actually, one of the reasons that I thought to start a nonprofit organization and specifically Save the Frogs was when I was doing my PhD in Australia in 2004. It was the end of my first year of my PhD, and I successfully got two large grants 
that were, as I recall, ten or fifteen thousand dollars each, and that was to help my to fund my PhD research, which was on the chytrid fungus. Just to let you know, I will be holding a class all about chytrid fungus, discussing what I did during my PhD, uh, coming up soon on Save the Frogs Academy. So I got two grants. One was from the National Geographic Society's Committee for Research and Exploration, and one was from the Epley Foundation for Research. And I thought to myself, wow, fundraising is going to be so easy if I can get this money the first year of my PhD before I even have much experience or a degree, then it won't be any problem at all. Well, that didn't turn out to be true, but luckily I had that thought because that thought made me think that I should definitely start a nonprofit organization. So at a minimum, uh, we got Save the Frog started from that fundraising success, but since then, it's definitely never been that easy um, for me writing up grants. And most of our focus and most of our success with fundraising has not come from grant writing. The first thing that I did when I started Save the Frogs, uh, even before I had the website, is I started a gift center. And specifically, I came up with a poster so that when we had the website, we would have something to sell. And that poster is the Frogs of Australia poster, which is a really awesome poster. So if you don't have it, you should go check out savethefrogs.com slash posters and get one. So uh, that's how we raised money in the very early days of Save the Frogs was just by selling that poster on the website when it was in its infancy and then adding some Donate Now links and a page to the website, which hopefully all of you have seen. If you go to the homepage and click donate now, <clears throat> you'll notice that we have lots of ways to donate to Save the Frogs. And if you're asking somebody like one of your friends to donate to Save the Frogs, then <clears throat> you can definitely direct them to savethefrogs.com slash donate, and they can donate straight through PayPal online securely, or maybe they're kind of old school and are afraid to donate online, in which case they can call us toll free 1-877-75-FROGS, donate by check. People can donate in honor of a friend or loved one. If you work for, or if your friend works for the federal government or the state of California, there are simple ways that, um, Government employees can donate straight through their paycheck, and we have info on that. Uh, if anybody ever asks you, save the frogs, is that tax deductible? Yes, we are 501c3 public charity, so if people donate, it is tax deductible to the fullest extent of the law. Sometimes people may say, save the frogs.com, why aren't you .org, which is a whole different story. Regardless, we are an official public charity, so everything is tax deductible. So when you're talking to people, some people may want to know that, so you can tell them with certainty uh, that we are. And uh, just to let you know, we can accept stock donations, uh, employers, your company. Certainly, if you work for a large company, may have a matching gifts program. Or if you know somebody who works for a large company, Boeing, Microsoft, um, uh, lots, lots of big companies have matching gifts programs. That means if you donate $50 or whatever, then your employee will match it out of their funds. So it's a great way to double your donation. Uh, let's see. So... Back to the story. Yes, we added some donate now buttons to our website. And then later on, this was all 2008, we had our next fundraising breakthrough, which was to sell shirts. So if you go to savethefrogs.com slash shirts, you can see all our awesome shirts. And so merchandise is probably... Um, 
15 to 20 percent of our income so selling merchandise is a great way to raise money and to spread the word and this is our original save the frog shirt the classic so if you don't have it go get yourself one save the frogs.com slash shirts and since then as you've probably seen in our gift center we've come up with lots of different items to sell and we use these not just selling them from our website but certainly for save the frogs day a lot of people have tables and events and we help people get materials either at cost or sometimes we ship people free materials if they're a dedicated trustworthy hardworking volunteer and then they can set up a table and sell save the frogs merchandise to raise money and that's what michael starkey is going to be talking about and I personally have uh, certainly gone through phases where I would go to farmers markets or get some volunteers to go to farmers markets in Santa Cruz to set up tables. And it depends how much traffic you have uh, at the event. Sometimes you don't make much money, but we've certainly made up to a couple hundred dollars at farmers markets in a couple hours just standing there educating people about frogs, meeting supporters, uh, selling shirts, wristbands, pins, stickers. So since I'm on that topic of holding tables, and as a lot of people do that, certainly for Save the Frogs Day, which I hope all of you will uh, organize a Save the Frogs Day event in your community, April 26th, 2014. Why don't we see if Michael Starkey, Save the Frogs Ecologist and Advisory Committee Chairman, is on the line, and we can switch it to him. Hi, Michael. Are you there? Yep, I'm here. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. I'm going to make you the presenter, and here we go. So everybody just hold tight for a second as we switch it over to Michael. And if anybody has any questions, you can uh, chat them in to me. Oh, here we go. Sorry. That was uh, my fault. It was taking so long. Here we go. Great. Let me just get set up here. Okay. All right. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, what I'm going to talk about to, uh, today is just tabling. So it's an introduction to tabling and effective advocacy as a volunteer for Save the Frogs. And as Carrie mentioned, um, you know, for where um, for raising funds and um, how, you know, we have these dedicated volunteers around the United States and even other parts of the world that have been raising funds for us at these tabling events. And so I'm going to talk about some of these ways that you can hold a table yourself at a various event and, um, yeah, some ways you can fundraise and kind of spread the message of Save the Frogs. And so for one, tabling, you know, tabling literally is setting up a table at an event. And so uh, this could be at a Save the Frogs Day event that you have set up yourself or a nature festival or even like a farmer's market or a rock concert. You'd be surprised where you can fit in a table for Save the Frogs and with the idea that there's educational materials out and um, uh, our eco-friendly merchandise for, um, uh, available for purchase. And so with that whole purpose of spreading the message of Save the Frogs. And so it's kind of important to ask, um, why are you tabling? Like, why are you personally as a volunteer tabling for Save the Frogs? And for one, it's really important to understand that amphibians are the most threatened group of organisms on the planet. and you know, you want to take that with you, and so you're going to take that and spread that message. And on that note, it's because you want to save the frogs that you are going to volunteer your time and your energy to spread this message and help fundraise or save the frogs. And so there's a few ways that are going to make this the most effective as possible. And one, 
you want to look good at <laughs> saving the frogs. And so appearance and perception are very, very important. At the table, you want it to look clean and neat and uh, bright and colorful. So if you see one of our volunteers here, she's organized everything uh, very neatly with informational signs out so people passing by will come and they'll be interested to see what, what this is all about. And also notice too, she, she looks pretty neat herself, uh, well kept together, and so she looks um, bright and happy and eager to talk to you. And so having this, um, this kind of friendly appearance is very, very important uh, into getting people to your table. And so it's also important to be very aware of your surroundings um, at various events. For example, uh, at some events, like this is at the Sacramento Reptile Show in California, and there are thousands of people coming in and out of this venue. And so if you don't have enough volunteers, it can be very um, easy to get overwhelmed. And so it's very, very important you have a few friends that can help you out to answer questions, handle merchandise, and make sure that everyone that comes to the table feels like their questions are being answered or their um, whatever they want to bring to the table, they're, they're being met. So it's important to be aware of your surroundings at events. And then communication is also really, really important, and solicitation. So when people are walking by your table, I, from my experience, it seems that 50% of people don't even notice your table. They just walk on by. And maybe 40% will actually look at the table, but keep on walking. And then maybe 10% will actually stop and be like, what is this about? What saved the frogs? And so it's very important to get that 40% that or whatever number that really is to engage them. And so you want to communicate to them and get them over to your table. And there's a few ways you can do this. And one very easy way, if you see someone looking and they're you know, looking at the table and they're walking by, say, you know, meet eyes with them, smile and be like, can you help me save frogs today? Or ask a question. Or like, do you want to learn a really cool fact about amphibians today? And so that's a very easy way to get someone engaged and get them to come to the table. And then another way is to actually have activities. So almost all tables that um, I have at whatever event, I try and um, not only have you know, educational materials that people can come and browse and read through, there's the merchandise that people, you know, are cool, I mean, we have some cool shirts, and so people want to see these and maybe purchase one, and that's great as well. But other things, too, that um, I like to do is I have an art station, and so part of the table, or if I'm lucky to have two tables set up, one table where it's just for kids, and actually adults, too where they can come, they can color, they can paint, or well, paint, color, um, or draw frogs. And we even have um, a printed um, uh, frog that people can actually color themselves. And so this is a great way to get kids to come to the table and they have this activity. And they're learning about frogs at the same time because I'll have books out with beautiful frog photos. I'll be talking to them about frogs. And so they're learning about frogs. They're making art. And then we can plug them into our annual art contest as well. So it's a great way to get them involved. And then it's also important to be prepared as much as possible. So there are some commonly asked questions that every single time I get at events. You know, for one, what's happening to the frogs? Why should we save the frogs? And surprisingly, I get many people that say, well, why not help people? Um, so these are all things that you should be kind of have prepared answers and address. Or then there's the identification questions too. Is it a reptile or an amphibian, a frog or a toad? Many people come to me asking, well, there's this animal in my backyard and I have no idea what it is. And so that's when you can point them to maybe some identification nature websites in your area. But the most important question is once you've kind of told them what's going on with frogs, why they're going extinct, it's important to tell them how they can save the frogs. And so that's when we like to direct them to the website. And then for volunteers too, we highly recommend you go to the website because we have two, over 250 pages of knowledge on there all about amphibians and how people can help so it's very, very important to get people and yourselves to the website and to be prepared if you're going to be tabling for Save the Frogs. And then, when in doubt, always refer back to the card. Um, if you're tabling for Save the Frogs, there's a good chance that you're going to have some of our informational cards out. And these info, info cards um, are a very, very easy way to um, answer questions if, if you're not familiar, too. Because cause one thing uh, that might be intimidating for people is when they are thinking about tabling, they might be worried that they have to be an expert. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because people are going to think you're the expert because you're behind the table. So it's important to, you know, hold your confidence and hold, you know, and even though you may not know all answers, that's okay. And so it's always okay to refer.
Hey, Michael, we lost you. Back to, I don't have to be. Yes. You're back. Oh, you did. Yeah, you're back. Can you hear me now? We got you. Okay, sorry about that. Great, sorry about that. So just in, when in doubt, refer back to that card. Allow um, people to, um, so they can, you know, take that information home with them. And so merchandise and donations, so besides making the amphibian extinction crisis common knowledge, it's very important, too, that we have this merchandise available and we have a, um, an area where people can leave donations. As a nonprofit, we don't receive funds. You know, we haven't received funds from the government, and we rely on individual donations and selling our merchandise to fund our efforts around the world. And so for donations, just having a simple jar that says, donate, save the frogs, and people will come by, They'll learn about what we're doing, and then they can leave a donation. And then for the merchandise, you know, having it out, having it look clean, presentable, um, is again, it looks attractive. People want to come up and purchase it, and they can take it home with them. And so this is also a very important part about tabling because it helps generate funds for our amphibian conservation efforts around the world. And then I want to spend a, a few minutes talking about effect, effective advocacy. And so because it's you know when we're behind the table. We really are representing Save the Frogs, and we're representing um, this also that, you know, we're, we're trying to say, hey, amphibians are going extinct, and we need to communicate this to the, um, the public. And so there's a few things that are going to help us with that. And one, it really is up to you as a volunteer to save the frogs. Um, you're the passionate individual that's um, behind the table that's chosen to speak up for the frogs, and there's many out there that won't do this because whether you know they might be afraid to do this kind of work or public speaking skills, um, just remember to keep that passion in mind and let that speak. It's up to you to save the frogs. And so there's a few things. One, you want to be polite as much as possible. When people come up to the table, um, some people may not be in a good mood or they might, sunk, you know, for whatever reason could be hostile. <laughs> you never know who you're going to get when someone comes up to a table. So always be polite and always take the higher ground if uh, a conversation doesn't go your way or in the sense of um, is not in a positive light. And if someone is just not in a good mood, say, hey, um, it seems like this may not be the best time to talk. Take an info card and move on. But always be polite and uh, courteous to people coming up to the table. And thanking people for talking to you is also very, very important. And I talked about passion. Let that passion come out because you're the one that's behind the table. You love frogs and you want to tell people. Let that resonate with uh, the audience that's coming up to you. And then also being persuasive is incredibly important as well. And this is somewhat of a harder concept to grasp. But, for example, if you have a petition out um, to ban, let's say, like bullfrogs. Because in California, they're an invasive species. So um, in Cal I usually have a petition to ban this frog uh, to, you know, um, so because people eat it for frog legs and um, so some people might be very bothered that this you know we're trying to uh, impose a law or these things and so it's important to know the information about the petition you have or about whatever facts you're trying to convey so that you can be persuasive and make good points that help help them come to your side and um, so they kind of meet you and they understand why you're trying to help these amphibians and so on that note, I want to talk a little bit about confrontations and depressing subjects. And I almost don't want to talk about this, but this happens at tables too. And I found that during my time tabling with Save the Frogs, almost every event I'll have some person um, that either is upset about something I've said, because um, it might be contrary to their beliefs, or they are overwhelmed by the alarming uh, amounts of um, you know, threats to face wildlife around the world because, say, the frogs, I mean, they are the most threatened group of organisms on the planet and they become quite overwhelming. So it's very important to always remain positive and always remain hopeful because we are making the change and to convey that to the person. And so if you ever have um, a depressing conversation, just come with them with that light and be that hope for them because that will actually resonate with them very, very much and they'll take that home with them when they go back. Um, and so a couple things to always have at the table, uh, always have the educational materials out, if anything. If you don't have merchandise, that's fine, but we want to make the amphibian extinction crisis common knowledge and refer people back to the website. Always mention Save the Frogs Day. Uh, this is one of our greatest achievements, and we want to help spread this around and encourage other people to get on board with this as well. And the art and the poetry contests are other great things to advertise at the table. 
Um, for example, you know, we've reached thousands of people around the world with our art and poetry contests, and so we want to promote this um, as everywhere that we go. And then getting students involved. This is one of my uh, things um, that I always have at my tables. I always try and get students involved. But whatever group of people you're at uh, or you're speaking to, they have a way that they can help out as well, whether they're a lawyer, a musician, an artist. Um, we actually have a page dedicated to many different types of pr professions. Um, so we encourage all, whatever uh, you know, walk of life you come from, people can help no matter where they're coming from. And so, but especially getting these students because fostering the next generation to care about amphibians, care about nature and wildlife is incredibly important for our mission. And so, and then lastly, just talking about that take home message. And so you probably, when you are tabling for Save the Frogs, you will have about 30 seconds um, to really keep someone's interest before they either walk off or they uh, or just they might walk off. So it's important that you let them know that amphibians are going extinct and that they can do something about that. Bring them back to the website is, or leave them with some educational materials and that'll greatly, um, you know, they'll um, help you with um, trying to convince them that the frogs are important and why they can help save them. And so with that, I want to quickly talk about peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising. Um, just take a couple minutes here as I change gears. And so what I want to talk about is peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising or crowdsourcing. And so Save the Frogs, as a, um, we do rely on volunteers and individuals to help us fundraise. And one way that you can do it is there's these great fundraising websites that you can raise money for your cause, just as this one right here, Crowdwise Rise does. And so with a simple idea is that if you have a campaign you want to help raise funds for, uh, you can do that with these personalized fundraising pages that you can advertise to your friends and your family. And also, um, you know, uh, it's just a very simple way to get your community involved with whatever, what it is. So if you're going to run for the frogs or have a bake sale for the frogs, these are some of the ways that you can do it on these personal fundraising pages. And a couple um, just examples. So on CrowdRise, this is one of my latest ones that um, I set up where um, I went to Ghana and I was raising money for my time in Ghana. And so and it's kind of like you have a blog that you could advertise, you could put photos up, and just helps people see what you're trying to do, why you're trying to raise money for the frogs. Um, and so you, know, you have your donations, people can leave comments. But there's other uh, websites as well. Like uh, originally we started with Stay Classy. And when I went to Belize in 2012, I raised funds, which was actually quite successful, and I met my goals. Um, uh, so to do conservation work in Belize. And so, you know, here's my schedule, the talks I was giving, and then again, people can leave a donation. So it's, it's great that people can do that. And then lastly, uh, there's um, many volunteers out there that, uh, that do great work, but unfortunately I just accidentally deleted his thing. Well, but many volunteers can do this work as well. Uh, we have a, another um, a great volunteer, Jeremy Pelsinski, who's raising uh, money for a PSA for atrazine. So he's making a video um, about atrazine that I was about to show. But uh, I, I yeah. was so actually that, going to show that, Michael. So I'll just. Oh, that, that's a perfect segue. Perfect segue. So I'll let you talk about that then. Okay, great. Or later on. So okay. Thank you. All right. Is that all? Yeah, that's it for now. Okay. Thank you very, very much. So let's switch the screen back to me and. See what happens. Okay, so I am back. This is Dr. Kerry Krieger again. And yeah, thank you very much for that, Michael. That was uh, quite interesting and informative. And it made me think of a few things. Uh, so we're on the topic of those crowd, crowd sourcing web page. Um, a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. So one thing, yeah, this is the one. Uh, Jeremy Pelsinski is a Save the Frogs volunteer, and he's in filmmaking school. He's a biologist, and his professional goal is to make awesome movies and films, videos about the environment, to educate people about the environment, and to spread the word as film is such a great way to get the word out. YouTube is the world's second most searched website. So there's a ton of people watching YouTube videos. And 
On that note, just to let you know, all these Save the Frogs Academy classes get uploaded usually the day of, right after the class, to youtube.com slash save the frogs. I think we have about 40 videos up there now. And that's one of the goals of Save the Frogs Academy is just to create this kind of educational content so that no matter how many people are in attendance live at the class, we can get many, many, many people into the future watching this information. <clears throat> so Jeremy uh, hopes to create a public service announcement, a PSA, all about atrazine, which we just had a class on a few days ago. And we need to raise some money <clears throat> so that he can uh, cover the production costs because making an actual professional quality film does cost some money. So just the other day, he set this page up on GoFundMe.com, and it's to raise money. We have not announced this yet. That's why no money has been raised, but <clears throat> we will announce it any day, and I certainly hope that you can contribute. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. The way, the reason that these work is because Jeremy, his name and his face is at the top of that page. All his friends are the people most the people most likely to donate to your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page are your peers, your friends, your family, people who know you, because people donate <clears throat> often. It's not because they know anything about the cause, or maybe they don't even care about the cause, but they know you, and they care about you, and they know it's important to you, so they will donate, and these pages are also good uh, we could definitely see it on Michael's because people had donated, but here you see recent donations. It'll show people's names. Now, if you're Jeremy's friend and you go up there and you see the names of three people that you also happen to know and that they've donated, then it's human nature that you're going to be more uh, ready to donate because <clears throat> your friends did it, everybody loves it, and maybe you want your name up there too. So yeah, there's lots of websites, Stay Classy, CrowdRise, Kickstarter, GoFundMe, uh, Love Animals, <clears throat> all these websites let you set up a page. You can say how much money you want to raise, what you're raising it for. It'll give you a link. You can put in all the info about why you're doing this, why you care, why it's important. And then you uh, get the word out to your friends and family by sending them the link by posting it on your social networking site, um, by telling them about it. But, you know, it's it's web-based, so probably sending out emails to the people you know and then maybe that reminding them in some other way. And, uh, yeah, so that's a great way that you can help out. And certainly come Save the Frogs Day time of year, come February, maybe you could set up one of these pages and... Uh, be promoting it. You can even promote it at your Save the Frogs Day event. Maybe you have a computer and computer and internet at your table and you can just have the page open. Maybe people can donate if they, you know, want to donate in that way. It's just another option. Okay, so uh, yeah, we'll be, look for this announcement in the email uh, pretty soon about this page right here because we'd really, I personally also would really like to get this money raised so that we can get an atrazine uh, public service announcement created. Okay, so going back to uh, Michael's talk, it made me think of a few things that I should definitely tell you. And I'm not sure he said this, maybe he did, but I'll just remind you, you need to make the ask. You need to ask people to donate or to buy the shirt. If they're at your table and you're talking to them about frogs, great. They're into it. They like what you, they like Save the Frogs. They like the idea. Don't just let them walk away or, you know, you let them walk away, but hopefully ask them while they're standing there, while they're interested, hey, can you donate, you know, a couple dollars to Save the Frogs or whatever? Or can you become a member? Can Do you want to buy this shirt? Or, you know, however you want to say it. But make sure that you put it out there, that you are looking to raise some money. And I know from personal experience that when I send out an email, if 
I send an email to everybody on our Save the Frogs mailing list. And at the top of it, there's no ask for people to donate. There's usually not many or any people who donate. So that's why I include an ask to donate at the top of almost every email I send out because I know that if I don't, people aren't going to donate because I didn't ask them to. So when you're out fundraising, make sure you ask people. And sometimes that's the most difficult part. You know, some people are shy or they don't like asking people for money, but you know that's how we save frogs. It's a fact of life. So make sure you make the ask. Another thing about the tables is have a donation jar. It's easy to make one by just getting some big glass or probably safer, a plastic container, like the kind of thing you'd buy a big thing of pretzels in at Costco, a big plastic jar, put a Save Frogs bumper sticker on it, write a little nice little, you know, sign that you tape on it that says donate to Save the Frogs or donate here, something like that. Put a few dollars in it to begin with so that people know, oh, this is where you drop your dollar bills in here. And that's a good way uh, people will come up to your table, especially like Michael said, if you have a station for kids and parents where the kids are just hanging out, drawing, the parents are standing around, they're watching their kid have a great time learning about frogs, and they'll be like, yeah, I should pull out a few dollars and stick it in the jar. Another thing about fundraising, when you're making your ask, <clears throat> keep this in mind. This is something I learned a few years ago, and it's I think it's kind of interesting. There's four ways to make, there's four different ways you can make a donation appeal. You can tell somebody about all the good that they will create now if they donate, which would be like if you donate now, then we'll have a Save the Frogs public service announcement video ready in five days. And that's in time to get the word out for the upcoming call for comments. So please donate now because all this great stuff is going to happen right now when you donate. Separate from that, there's the good that will happen in the future. If you donate to Save the Frogs today, then we will have a society of people who respect and appreciate nature and wildlife and we will have so many frogs in the future for your kids and grandkids there will be frogs all over the place there's also the bad that will happen now we need you to donate now because if you don't donate now then this frog species is going to be extinct in one month's time because they're going to bulldoze over its last remaining habitat and then there's the bad that could happen in the future. If we don't raise enough money, then Save the Frogs Day will never take place in the future. We just won't have enough money to continue that program. And thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of kids will grow up not knowing anything about the importance of frogs or maybe not even seeing frogs because the frogs will have gone extinct. So those are four different ways that you can phrase your appeals. and. Uh, what I was told and have slightly confirmed through my experience that surprisingly, I guess, and maybe depressingly, the one that works the best is the bad that will happen now if you do not donate. If you don't donate today, everything's going, all these frogs are going extinct tomorrow or Save the Frogs is shutting down. We no longer have any money. We need you to donate today, right now. Something to that effect. So just, you know, something to keep in mind. I, I like to always keep it optimistic uh, because there's already enough pessimism in the world about certainly the environment. I like to keep it optimistic. But in reality, the one of the four that does work the best, and I don't use it very often, only in times of need when it's true, is we need this money now or something bad is going to happen right away. And that just emotionally triggers people to donate now. All right. So before I continue, since we have a very special guest on the line, uh, we're going to switch it over to CN Hayes. And CN is our um, newest Save the Frogs board member. CN, you are unmuted and I'm about to make you 
the presenter. So something will probably um, show up on your screen asking you if you want to show your computer, in which case you're welcome to. So Is it working? yes, we see and hear you and go ahead and uh, feel free to introduce yourself. Mm, I don't know how to make it full screen now. Is it working? It works. You can, uh, I'm not sure how to use open office. Usually, usually there's a but. Okay, you got it. Hi, I'm Sien. Um, yep, board member of Save the Frog. And Carrie just asked me to talk about my donation or my campaign that I did around Save the Frog Day this year. Um, and this was the first campaign that I really ran by myself for donations. I had done appeal letters before for various nonprofits and events and things, but this is the first time I kind of stepped out from behind the nonprofit and said, you know, you're donating because this is what I'm passionate about. Carrie was just talking about different kinds of donation appeals. And I think, yeah, you can donate, you can get people to donate for the nonprofit, but also I kind of in this one did it, do it because I'm really passionate about this and this is what I like and I'm asking in person. So um, I didn't really like fundraising very much because I thought asking people for money was uncomfortable. So, but I really started thinking about, you know, the value of nonprofits and the fact that organizations like Save the Frogs are run almost exclusively on donations. So I wanted to do something. So I figured I would ask everybody for an achievable amount of money. So I asked basically everyone I knew for $5 to donate to Save the Frogs. And my initial thought was um, that I could ask everyone on Facebook. I have 500 friends. If everyone donated $5, it'd be a great campaign. So I did um, a bunch of Facebook posts leading up to Save the Frogs Day. And the funny thing was that that actually didn't work at all. Um, basically, only three people donated on Facebook. So I started asking everyone I knew in person. So I asked my coworkers, my friends, my family, my ex-coworkers, my ex's family, everybody I knew um, for $5. And I did this in an email campaign and in person. And the in-person donations, I think almost 100% of people that I asked gave me at least $5 and gave more if, if they could. Um, so the, the minimum amount made it comfortable enough for me to ask people, but most people you know, took that opportunity to donate more if they could. But it really just, I don't know, I had a really good time. I didn't think initially that I would like it very much, but I got so inspired about wanting people to donate, and it was really fun when people did donate. And for me, a lot of my friends aren't typically donating to nonprofits, so it was an opportunity for them to get involved and for us to talk about donating and how important it is. And I got to talk about frogs for a week and I really had a really good time and I was dreading it and it was fun and um, successful. And they ended up raising $500 from asking just everybody for $5. And then after anybody donated, I would follow up with an email with a cute frog video or uh, picture, fun fact. So I think next year when I do the campaign, I think people had fun. I had fun. So I think it will be even more successful next year. That's about all. Oops. All right. Thanks a lot, CN. And if you have any questions. Sorry, I cut you off briefly. If questions, if you have yeah, if anyone has any questions for CN or for Michael or for me, uh, you can either chat in your question or you can raise your hand and uh, we can take questions and i i still have some things to talk about so i'm going to continue so you can keep thinking about your questions but uh you know you're we're up for taking questions at any point so cn uh thank you very very much thank you All right, I'm back. So, yeah, on that note, I'll say regarding CN's fundraising, she was just asking for $5. The key takeaway is that when she used the Internet to ask for money, it was not very successful. But when she asked people face-to-face, -face, it was very successful. Most people have $5 that they can give. Most people, if you pull out an envelope that 
looks very official will trust you even more that that money is going into an envelope. It must be real. It's not you just asking me for money to put in your pocket and go home and do something other than save frogs with. So, you know, keep it professional. <clears throat> if you're talking to people in person, it's good to have something official looking to put the money into. You don't need to. I don't think CN did that, but I know another of my volunteers has spoken of the importance of that. And also as far as CN doing this campaign again in the future, it's a commonly known fact that once somebody donates, it's much easier to get them to donate in the future. So when she goes back to these same people or many of these same people next year, they'll already have donated once. They know about the frogs. They're happy that CN is still doing frog stuff and they're probably very likely to donate again in the future. And thus CN is, has a high chance of raising more than $500 when she does it in the future. Okay, we have a uh, question here. This coming in from Jessica. Thanks for hosting this informative program. I've worked for several nonprofits and no fundraising can be one of the most stressful parts of running an organization. Does Save the Frogs have or have you considered hiring a major gifts officer I know paying the salary for this person is an initial investment, but it has a huge payback if done right. <clears throat> That's a great question. We don't have any development director or full-time fundraiser. I am definitely in charge of most of the fundraising and uh, certainly my few people on staff help out, not, not the um, amount that I do fundraising, but in general, to answer your question, no, we don't. And it would be great. And one of the reasons that I'm holding this um, Save the Frogs Academy class is because it is so important that the more assistance we have fundraising, the more time we can dedicate to uh, creating educational materials and running our programs rather than spending our time fundraising. So getting you all trained up is great. And on this topic, one thing I wanted to do was announce that we are looking for volunteers. If one of you or anybody listening to this video in the future is very interested in fundraising and wants to volunteer for Save the Frogs as an official volunteer, and if you can commit to four hours per week minimum, for a year, then I'm happy to supervise you, give you ideas and some assistance, and your volunteer duty would be to help raise funds through all these means that we've talked about. Uh, and you would undoubtedly pick up a lot of fundraising experience that you could then use in the future to save the frogs or for another nonprofit organization, or perhaps you want to start a nonprofit of your own. It's great experience. So if anyone wants to focus on uh, fundraising for a volunteer project and you can commit to four hours a week for a year, then let me know. As far as hiring somebody, yeah, we would love to, but we can't at this moment in time, but yes, I have thought about it. And if you have thoughts on it, I'm certainly happy to talk to you um, later on. All right, so keep the questions coming in and I'm going to continue with uh, going back. We digressed. I was giving the history of fundraising at Save the Frog. So I'll continue on that. Um, let's see. So one of the things that is most important to Save the Frogs is our Save the Frogs newsletter, which you can see on the left side of our um, website. Subscribe to the free Save the Frogs newsletter. If you know people who like frogs, try to get them to sign up for the newsletter. If they're definitely into frogs, tell them, sign up for the newsletter. Right now, we've got about 30,000 people on our mailing list, and that's so crucial because probably our 
most significant fundraising method is by sending out the newsletters that I send out about once a week, giving all our updates on our frog activities and often having a specific appeal for donations. And you as well, if you know lots of people into that are into the environment or potential fundraising fundraising sources, create a mailing list or you know, some type of group in your email so that, you know, maybe every few months you can email them something specific about frogs or the environment and that you know a specific group that you can target because that's what's worked better than anything else for Save the Frogs just by having a group of currently 30,000 people and hopefully always rising to ask for assistance. So if it's worked for us, then it should work for you. Another thing that we do to raise money that we introduced about a year and a half after getting started is Save the Frogs memberships. And so right here on the homepage, you can scroll down, join Save the Frogs, become a member today. And we have different levels of memberships. And if you're not a member, then please become a member. And if you're asking people to help out or if you're running a table, you can tell people they can become a member. Sometimes we sell the memberships right at the tables. Another um, thing that we've gotten benefit from is that Facebook sometimes, or we'll say companies, sometimes hold uh, voting contests on Facebook, as in they say, if your organization raises more votes than anybody else, we'll give you X thousands of dollars. So we came in 20th for the Chase Bank Community Giving Contest about a year and a half ago, and that was good enough to win us $25,000. So we were 20th out of thousands of charities who were trying to raise votes. And Nature's Path uh, Enviro Kids Serial held a similar type of thing uh, last year. And we came in first with more votes than anybody else. And that got us to the final round where we could then submit an application. And there were only about 10 organizations asked to submit. So we got, I think it was $10,000 from that. So be on the lookout if you're on any kind of social media and there's some organization saying, hey, right now we're holding some type of contest and all you need to do is get your organization to get more votes than anyone else. We do a good job getting votes because we've got about 20,000 followers on Facebook. So definitely keep us posted if you ever hear about anything like that. And um, going back to what Jessica asked before, fundraising assistance, if anyone out there has actual grant writing um, experience, then definitely let us know if you have some time to help out. And certainly scientists, most scientists have grant writing experience. But, you know, if you've worked for a nonprofit before and have done that, then it would be great. We have gotten some grants in the past. We got a $5,000 grant from Patagonia clothing retailer, and we've gotten a couple other um, uh, helpful grants. Corporations often uh, give out grants, and there's foundations. So just be on the lookout. If you ever hear about any relevant grants for environment or education, then definitely let us know. And another thing about fundraising is the time of year is really important. The most important months for Save the Frogs are December and April. December, and even starting in November, that's holiday season. People are cheerful, hopefully, and they are in the mood to give because that's kind of the theme of that time of year. And it's the end of the tax year, so some people know how much they made that year, they know how much they can give away that's tax deductible, and they specifically save most of their large gifts for that time of year in December when they know exactly how much they can give away to charity and it be tax deductible. 
and they're inspired to do so because it's the holiday season. So December is a great time to do some fundraising. And for that, I definitely suggest preparing, thinking about it in November or maybe even October. And then the other important time is April. And that specifically is because it saved the Frogs Day at the, the last Saturday of April. There's also lots of other Earth activities going on in April, Earth Day and lots of other events. So it's definitely important to focus on those times of year. And that brings up an event that we hold that you may not know about. And let me uh, find it. If you're on our homepage, you can scroll down until you see fundraise for Save the Frogs. Before I click through here, just because I saw this and it has such a awesome, cool icon, donate your car to Save the Frogs. If you're ever getting rid of a car, even if it's falling apart and you don't think it's worth much, then you can donate to, to Save the Frogs, get a tax write-off, and somebody will show up at your door wherever you are in America a day or two later from a company that we work with. They'll pick up your car, give you a tax deduction receipt, drive off, and you're done. Then they will sell the car at an auction and give most of the money to Save the Frogs. So it's a super easy way for Save the Frogs to raise money and for you to get a tax write-off. So right here, fundraise for Save the Frogs. Get lots of ideas here. This is where I kind of keep a compilation <clears throat> of ideas for people to Save the Frogs. And I'm going to run you through these. But first, because I was talking about times of year that are important and latching on to things that will help people save the frogs, take advantage of special frog days. 4 4 44, 44 minutes for the frogs is something I came up with last or earlier this year to hold on April 4th, 4 4. And so we have a 4 4 44, 44 minutes for the frogs, where what I like to do is ask people to either spend 44 minutes fundraising, that means take 44 minutes from your day on 4 4, April 4th, and ask people to donate maybe $4, maybe $44, or $444. And if you can't find 44 minutes for the frogs, then hopefully you can donate $44. So we have a little sign up of if you are planning to fundraise on 4444 and dedicate 44 minutes for the frogs, then you can sign up and we can uh, send you some info. And so we tried this out last year or earlier this year for the first time. And I think we raised about $2,000. And that's $2,000 that probably never would have come to be if we did not make a special occasion for people to fundraise. So it's to your benefit to make a special occasion or take advantage of these special occasions such as 4444 or Save the Frogs Day or, hey, it's the end of the year, it's holiday season. They just give people extra reason to donate and it gives fundraisers extra reasons to ask people. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to try to close it up shortly. But first I want to run you through this fundraising assistance page, which is savethefrogs.com slash fundraise. Or as I showed you, just go scroll down our homepage till you see the fundraise icon. And we have some ideas here. Hold a fundraising house party, savethefrogs.com slash party. And we have a page all about fundraising parties. That means you've got an office where you work or you've got a home and you invite people over and you let them know that it's a party for the frogs, that you'll be fundraising. Uh, it's not a secret. It's not like they're all going to show up and then all of a sudden you're going to ask them for money. They know it's a frog fundraising party. So make it frog themed and talk to people about frogs. And we've got tips on what to do, how to send out proper invitations, uh, what the schedule of the party and events should be. We definitely urge you to give an actual presentation at which you will make an actual ask for 
funds or have the host of the house, the party host, make the ask. And then some other things you should do to make the party a success. So you can check out that page if you want to have a fundraising house party. Bait sale, Michael mentioned before. Uh, we had been giving out free cookie cutters. I need to update this page. Most of the people we sent free cookie cutters to seem to just disappear off into the world, probably eating lots of frog-shaped cookies for themselves. Some people, though, did follow through and actually send us in money they raised. And what we're going to do is just replace this. They're only a couple bucks to get yourself a cookie cutter. So we'll put up a couple links to companies where you can order them online. Just bake some cookies. They're shaped like frogs. And then when you have your vent, you can sell your frog-themed cookies. My mother was generous enough to uh, bake us up some frog cookies for the first Save the Frogs Day 5K race. And they definitely sold quite well and tasted good and raised some money for the frogs. So it's something that certainly if you like to cook that you can do. If you use eBay, you can dedicate a portion of anything that you sell to Save the Frogs. If you dedicate 100% of it to Save the Frogs, I think they don't even charge you any kind of eBay fees or anything. We've got a couple of search engines where if you use that search engine, it'll donate a penny to Save the Frogs every search you make, and that does add up. If you shop online, which most of you do, Good Search has a Save the Frogs toolbar, which will install, and you can even hide it from view. You won't even notice it's there. But if you go to many of these companies, large companies that you probably do inevitably shop at, a lot of them will donate to Save the Frogs a portion of whatever you spend. So, for instance, Patagonia donates 3.5%. So if you had this toolbar installed and went to Patagonia's website, you may not even know they're donating, but it would be donate, they donate 3.5% to Save the Frogs. And let's see, get creative. Just, you know, think of ways that'll get people, think of what your skills are and how can you bring it into the world of frogs. This guy, Jordan, in Florida, is an artist and made awesome looking frogs, frog sculptures that um, he used to raise some money for Save the Frogs. And I think that's it. One final thing, you know, a well-written appeal. Here we have a message from Rachel Hopkins, who's a student that likes to save frogs and has gotten a whole lot done. And, you know, a well-written appeal goes a long way. So certainly if you're using email to uh, raise some funds and take, take a few minutes and put some feeling into your appeal and it will probably be successful. So if you have, we're running towards the very end. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. And I'm just going to look on my list and see if we have any other thing that I had wanted to mention. Okay, if anyone wants to raise their hand and talk, they can do that. And otherwise, I'm just going to... Uh, <clears throat> bring it to a close in a couple minutes, but first I want to let you know about upcoming Save the Frogs events. Uh, the 23rd of August, Michael Starkey will be speaking at Safari West, which is about an hour north of San Francisco. August 25th, this Sunday, Michael will be leading a Save the Frogs Academy class all about the pet trade, which has uh, a significant impact on amphibians through potentially spreading diseases, taking frogs out of the wild, ethical issues related to keeping amphibians um, in tanks. So definitely join us for that. I should be on the line as well to give you my thoughts. And August 28th, Michael will be talking about California's natural, California, natural history of California's amphibians. So Save the Frogs Academy class, that's a week from today. I will be in Colorado speaking at Colorado State University on 
Thursday, August 29th. So if you are from Colorado, definitely come and try to bring some friends. And I'll just end it right there. Go definitely check out the Save the Frogs Academy web page or the events page, Save the Frogs events page, so that you know what's happening online or in your part of the world coming up. Okay, final chance for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. And looks like we discussed everything so thoroughly. There are no questions. So I thank you. Thanks to Michael and CN for speaking. Thanks to all of you for being here. And we will upload a video of this class to youtube.com slash Save the Frogs, where you can find lots of Save the Frogs Academy educational videos. Thank you all very much for your support and good luck in your fundraising efforts. My name is Dr. Kerry Krieger, and I thank you for being here. So have a great day. Bye.